Welcome back to Limbus Company, Daily Mirror Dungeon. It's update day, and in fact, it's not just any old update, specifically Gluppo update day. We get the funny egos now, the cavernous wailing egos. So uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Maintenance compensation, new target extraction, stuff like that. Yeah, uh, oh yeah, the standard fair ego. Here they both are. Pretty cool stuff. We'll take a look at them after they extract them. Of course, I'll do my daily pulls. There's no reason to 10 pull for an ego. It doesn't have high enough chances at all. But if I get lucky in one of these, maybe I'll get it without needing to spend, you know, a bunch of boxes on them. Would be optimal, but I'm not going to be too concerned either way, right? Okay. And do we get anything from the actual cavernous whaling target extraction banner? And the answer is no, that's fine. I'm not too worried. Right. How many shards do I have for both of them? Not a lot, I don't think. Yeah. Yeah, okay. We'll just pop like 300 for each. No, that's that's wrong. I meant to do... Nah, I kind of want 300. Yeah, we'll do 250 to start out with. Because we're going to need to up-die them, of course. 250 for Sinclair. And then 250 for Honglu. Honglu probably needs, you know, 300, but... That'll work. Yeah, that's definitely good enough. I'm fine with adding some extras, right? Let's start off with the Sinclair one. Sad little German boy. Uh, yeah, there it is. Looks pretty cool. I like how the new Ego artwork looks, you know, a lot more like ID artwork than the old ones used to. And Hong Lu as well, so grab yours. Sorrow shaken heart bursts like this. Sure does. And this is the, Mr. Gloom himself. Of course, he gets one of these. Of course, it's not an actual Gloom ego, but he's the guy who would, would fit the most to be Gloom, but his base is Gloom already. Yeah, that's just their quotes they add for the extraction to your heart. Stuff like that. I'm sure there's something funny you can do with those. Like, uh... I don't know. I'm not good with funny things. I just have the contract one because I find the Pluto joke funny. Yeah, we got both of these. Uh, they're both going to be pretty good, I'm sure. Well, Sinclair's especially. We'll start with Sinclair's because it's the one I'm excited for. Blubber Bubble is cool. And do I have enough to get it up again? I do. Cool. Actually, a fair bit more. Huh. I forgot. You don't even need... You need a lot of thread, not shards. Okay. That's fine. I've still got some Sinclair shards saved up for whatever comes next for him. He's probably not getting any soon. Eight, 16 plus 8. Not as particularly high roll, but still decent. It's a base ego. Is that a minus 2 offense level? 15 Sandy cost is nice. 3 Gloom, 2 Sloth, 1 Lust. So, okay, 6 cost for Zayn. Might be worth it, though. Gains highest resonance, minus 2 attack weight, max 2. So at 4 resonance of whatever, it becomes a 3 target. For 15 cost, not bad. 6 resources, though. That's a trade-off. By 20% is using max HP shield to self, and 1 plus high resonance minus 2 allies at least HP. No cap on that one. Interesting. So it's guaranteed to be... I mean, it's basically just how much the resonance is. 6 resonance applies to everyone. Because it's self and 1, which makes 2, plus highest resonance minus 2. So yeah. All allies with, to the, with least HP and apply 2 blower bubble as well. Max number of allies that gain blood. Oh, the max number of allies is 3. So it can't actually be everyone. Yeah, I missed that part. Thank you, Nardi's blower bubble changed blower bubble value to 2. Okay, so blower bubble, it's similar to uh, Echoes of the Manor. Yeah, it doesn't stack. It just is set to 2 again. Or it becomes 3 if it's a high gloom absolute resonance. That's cool. We'll look at blower bubble in a second. Corrosion. I turn my two attack weight, similar type of deal. Gain 10 aggro. Oh! I didn't even notice that when I was looking at the corrosion before. 10 aggro, that's nice. Actually, aggro for Mariachi Sinclair. Let's go. This is the Mariachi Sinclair support we've been needing. He can, you know, partially fuel it. He doesn't have lust, but he's got gloom. He's got sloth. So, yeah, maybe this is Mariachi Sinclair resonance. Or, uh, renaissance. <laughs> not resonance. Um, applies a little bit of sinking. Not a lot, but some of it. Gain 20 plus 5, highest resonance percentage units, max HP shield itself, and 2 blower bubble. So yeah, this one just is only blower bubble on self. So the corrosion is selfish, while the 
Awakening is good for allies. That's how a lot of egos like this are. Passive, you need the shield to gain protection. Gain additional protection. That's two protection if you have Blubber Bubble. Not bad. Okay. So Blubber Bubble itself has a lot to it. Counts the shield management effect. Reduces cap by one each turn. Does not lose shield as long as it has an effect. What's the shield max? 60% max HP max shield. Oh, that's pretty good. I was expecting it to be like off 30% maybe. I didn't expect it to be that high. Not bad. Shield breaks if like forcing potency count randomly. Does not lose shield. Okay, yeah, that's cool. I like this a lot. It also changes your base resources. You're weak to gluttony and envy. And you resist gloom. Sure. I don't, you know, I don't pay too much attention to the base say and resistances. But yeah, I like this eagle a lot. It seems like it'll be fun. Better than branching knowledge this time. Only 15 sanity costs means it's better than Branch of Knowledge usually for sanity, since Branch of Knowledge costs 20 sanity if you roll heads. Which is lame. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Okay, cool. Now to move on to the Hong Lose, which is the one I'm less excited for and kind of not looking forward to, because Tremor Reverb is lame. Okay. Uh. Why are you being like this game? I'm just trying to thread through my ego. My Wi-Fi is not down. Is it? Is it about to go down? It might be? Okay. You think you're so funny connecting. You you don't want me to up thread spin this ego, do you? You want me to just keep it at thread spin one forever, not see the horrors it has to unleash upon the Tremor team. Is that it? I assume that's it. All right. Uh, Give me a minute to see if this gets fixed on its own. Okay, I had to uh, restart the game because I waited a few more minutes and nothing happened, and I kept on having more connection issues, but it's finally working now. Let's thread spin you a little bit more now. Uh, I'll just ignore the fact that the game was just rude to me like that. It's fine, it's fine. Here we've got you at upside four now. Let me look at it. Tremor, reverb. Does not have a cap. Does it really not have a cap? Ugh. Alright. That's fine, I guess. I... Yeah. It's kind of greenish, it feels like. It might just be because of how, you know, next to each other it looks more green. Let's see. Deal more damage. Yeah. Flick Tremor. Tremor Count. Tremor Reverb. Cool. Yeah, it's a three target. I need to try and burst, including ego skills. Okay, so that's the fact it warrants itself. You debuff a bit with it. Sure. All right. Don't have anything else to say about that. Yeah, I wish it was so much worse. That's so boring. <laughs> I was wishing for the downfall of this ego because, uh, it's just tremor. Uh, it's just sloth rupture, basically now. It's just worth slush rupture. Yeah. I guess that's fine. Well, give me a second to build a team. I know what I'm doing today. I think I've known the entire time. Let's just get to it, shall we? All right. It's the next morning. I had to wait since last night. Connection issues were being an issue basically the entire time. PM didn't pose an issue about that, so I've got no idea what was going on there. But a lot of other people are having connection issues too, so I don't know. Anyways, it's Mariachi Sinclair time. We've got, you know, Cavernous Wailing here. We're going to try seeing if Cavernous Wailing is enough to make Mariachi Sinclair work better? The answer is probably no, but it might work out. Issue is, we're really going to need to get something that gives us lust resources, because otherwise we can't fuel it on our own. That's just going to be what we hope to see somewhere on the first floor, though, right? Nebulizer is funny. Lethograph is really good, but we kind of need lust resources first and foremost, I think. And is there anything that gives us lust resources here? No, nothing. I mean, oh, travel with the blast. Okay, we'll take that. It's worth it, I think. I think that's worth being our primary focus. I don't think this floor should be too bad. It might be. There's a fair bit of enemies that with Slash, right? Yeah. And that's right, because if we're in Mirror Dungeon, we do have plus two to max speed, so we do actually have a chance to roll decent speed with Mirror Sinclair. It's still a two minimum. It's still two to five, which is not great when you've got a plus two to max, but like, yeah. Look at that. 
It's not bad. Um, it's not good either, but under the brakes, right? We'll get our Panada partying off. We'll uh, we can't clash here. That's fine. We're definitely gonna want to focus on getting to focus encounter and stuff, just because they we, they're something we can handle so much better. Yeah, gluttony and envy week are we? That's something to keep in mind as well, since those are the innate weaknesses of the blubbering toad ego. And pull out a cavernous wailing here. I will. You know, it might as well, right? Live a little. We don't clash with it, though. We probably shouldn't if we're not clashing with it. Yeah. These guys are going for some mean attacks this turn. And then I mean they're defending, so I can't build up sanity. Because I really need to build up sanity. I don't have any ways of healing right now, either. So, things aren't exactly looking the best. That's okay. That'll change. We're starting with, uh... The sinking EO gifts, I believe. I think that's what I went with, because I figured I might as well. It's beneficial. Okay, we're gonna get hit quite a bit here. Yeah, we might just lose like immediately this run. I wouldn't be that surprised. We just gotta hope we get an ego gift that heals or something from one of these events on this floor. Because we have three events this floor. It could very well prove to be something super useful, depending on what it is, right? Because, like, if we get something like a lithograph or even something that just... Anything that heals us would be so good. Like, even, like, a homeward or anything. Okay, we're at max sanity now, though, so that's good. We'll see how much that helps us out. We're not going to roll very well with most of our attacks, simply because we are Mariachi Sinclair. Uh, kind of hard to forget, but it's important to reiterate in case you do forget. Because if you forget, uh, we are Mariachi Sinclair. We're already almost staggered, and we've been in one fight and we've barely done any damage to the enemy. And that's basically Mariachi Sinclair in a nutshell, right? He's a tank who just lacks enough tank capabilities. He's just a tank who suffers from how evade works in this game. If you could actually evade every single enemy with a single evasion in normal encounters, you'd be he'd be so much better, right? But that's kinda, you know, the balancing, I think, right? Yeah, if you roll high, you might just get staggered here. Wouldn't be nice. Okay, no, we're fine, though. Maybe we wouldn't have been staggered. Maybe I was overreacting. I don't know. If we manage to fall in, like, the sweet spot of HP, we could get end up this fight not staggered, but end up without a stagger threshold next fight, which would be pretty cool. Because thanks to the fact we can move our stagger threshold around with our skill 3 with our Panada party. Still don't know why it's Panada Party and not like Pinata Party or something. From what I know, no one seems to know why though, so I don't know. It's a weird thing on PM's part, I guess. Who can say? Okay. I think we're below our stagger threshold now. So next fight we're gonna be in a better position, potentially. We're still going to have to go through an entire fight with Mariachi Sinclair, though. We might just genuinely die because we don't have a method of healing yet. And this is still only the first floor. We're fighting Kanto 1 enemies on the first floor, and we're having this much trouble. Not exactly a, a good omen for the rest of this run, eh? Okay, we are getting some kills now, though. So we're, we're, we've basically won, right? Yeah. Get a bunch of sloth skills in. Why not? Because we're going to need a bunch of sloth, because it's two sloth per use of Cavernous Wailing. Might as well build it up while we're given the opportunity. Maybe using more skill threes would have been the smarter move, but I wouldn't want to get hit, even if we could have just evaded and not gotten hit anyways, right? But yeah, next fight, we're def we're going to just start popping, you know, Cavernous Wailing at the start of each fight from now on, probably. The lust is the big issue, but... We're just gonna have to bear it. Oh, that's a weird change. Uh, oh, tattoo works killer skill three. Um, huh, that's interesting. I assume that's intentional. You can't hover over them anymore, but you can click on it. You can actually open up the menu. Okay, that works. Not bad. So it's kind of weird, but it works, right? It's a logical enough change. Okay, more bug guys, but we can cavernous one of these fools. Do we want to corrode it? That's the question. 
Because uh, the reason I ask that is because the corrosion, I mean, has more benefits, but it also costs more and probably is not worth it, right? Yeah, because it's even more shield, I guess based on highest resonance, so it's actually about as much shield if we don't have any resonance. Okay, we'll just use Awakening then. Use it a little bit. Our SP will go down a bit, but not too much for me to be too concerned, right? And we'll get the barrier, so it'll help us. The, bl the blubber bubble, blubber bubble, blubber bubble. Such a fun word. So that's a little bit of shield. And also means we trigger the passive, which means we get... What is it? Two protection every turn we have Blubber Bubble, basically? Because one protection as long as we have shield. Two protection is if we have shield and Blubber Bubble at the same time. So yeah, that'll help out a bit. We're going to take a fair bit of damage here, but we should be able to take a decent bit of it. These guys are going for a lot of slash attacks, so that's a little scary. I haven't seen the Blubber Bubble actual effect before. That's funny looking. And we have three protection this turn because we managed to get the random one protection from uh, G Gorbotus. That's cool. Uh, party, we don't have a stagger threshold, so that part doesn't matter. Blur Bubble does run out, though, so... Yeah. Do we feel the need to do it again? Maybe. It's, it's not looking great, that's for sure. But we're not, like, dead yet. So that's at least something. Right? Hey, nice banana party. Uh, staggers are always good. Any damage at all is just kind of good, though, you know. But I really do not think I can afford to use another Blubber Bubble this fight, because if I do, I won't have enough lust to use any in the next fight. And we we're going to really need them for the boss, because it's going to be an it's going to be an Abno, though, so we might not necessarily need it for the boss, right? Because Abno's it's usually not nearly as hard with Mariachi Sinclair, because, well, we've got Evasion. And we can just rely on that heavily. And we should be basically set. It's mainly the normal fights we gotta be careful of. So those are the fights where the Blur Bubble will help us out a bunch. If we can get... Something I learned from the Suncliff fight also. If we can get the Gift Sack, we're gonna be in a great position. Because that's just super strong. Just giving us a bunch of protection every turn for free. Of course, we'd need to go to the Christmas floor to get that. But if I do see the Christmas floor, I might just go for it because it would be nice. There's a couple enemies with slash decks on the Christmas floor, though. It might be dangerous. I think, are they neutral to blunt? I think so. I know they're weak to pierce, but might not be a bad idea just for this chance of getting the gift sack. This gift sack is strong. It's also more poise, which uh, we kind of need some more poise, honestly. I've got the BLE song support, so once we get a little bit of pride, we'll be able to get even more poise. But if we can actually use Sinclair's poise, uh, that would be beneficial, I think. We'll have to see if I can, though, right? So far, we are, we are going to live through this floor, so that's good at least. Issue is... Do we want to heal? Yeah, we're going to heal. I keep on... I need to remember, we're going to have evasion for the actual Abno fight, so whoever it is, it shouldn't be too bad. None of the options are that bad anyways. The only issue is, if it is Doomsday Calendar, we're gonna really need to stall the first couple of turns. Because, uh... We need to make sure that we're gonna have enough skill slots to be able to deal with everything. That's Apple, though, I think, right? So that's fine. Uh, Talisman, sure. I don't really need the Wooden Doll, so I'm not gonna bother fighting you. Uh, I'll take this... You just need one has. That's funny. Cool. Ashes to ashes. That's some stuff, stuff to like sell and the like, right? And we can heal you a bunch. That'll be nice. You're probably above your stack. That she'll just barely, which is a little scary, but we've got evasion. I'm not too concerned. Uh, we could try upgrading this. In offense level, we don't really need that. Yeah, we're just going to save that for next floor. The shot we get next floor, we're going to need to reroll for stuff that gives healing and resources. Very much so. The apples is very doable, at least. As long as we don't get, like, a random bad roll, we're basically set. Yeah, we'll st we can stall a little bit as well if we need to. That's Clash Lose, so... Oh, they're both Clash Lose turns, right? Alright. The Golden Sheen will go down, I guess, slowly-ish. That's fine. 
It's not that big of a deal. It's one of those gimmicks that you rarely ever pay attention to, right? It's kind of funny them paying attention to it for once right now. Maybe I should do it like this, huh? Yeah, like that. Cool. Landorf skill 2 is one-sidedly, and then the evade should be able to deal with both of those. When we don't have skill 1 or skill 3s, we really can't do too much. Uh, in terms of clashing, that's for sure. That's fine. This is a nice fight to, fight to get, because we can stall a decent bit here, right? Also save this, actually. That's not a bad idea. Do that. Keep landing hits. Do you get staggered here? Yeah, you do. Cool. We didn't even need to evade. I still would, just for safety, because I don't want to get, you know, one-sided by the apple and die. That would be an unfortunate way to go out. Of course, because I am doing a solo, I'm going to restart when need be. Yeah, we've got a lot of skill 3 prepared for next turn, and we will have still 6 skill slots going into the second phase, so that's good. We're going to be set. Also, our evade does give us poise count, so it could theoretically maintain our poise. Unfortunately, our skill 1 has no poise on it whatsoever, so our skill 1's just kind of like a poise drain. Okay, we still do have poise though, so that's funny. Okay, you're attacking us a bunch, that's fine. We'll do something like this, and we'll just put out a party all these, yeah. That'll work. Julio Hedonista doesn't matter, because that's only when you dodge. It's insane that Jubilio Hebanista has always been Gloom Resonance, even back before his evade was Gloom Resonance, or Gloom was Gloom Affinity, because it literally only does anything if you are evading, right? It's a super odd choice in general. That's trying kind of true for Mirror F. Sinclair as a whole. Classic unit of maybe up to I-5 will make him better, but... Most of his flaws come with just the design of the game, not necessarily his own fault, right? Fault doesn't lie with him. Land a bunch more attacks. The good stuff. Yeah. False Apple is a pretty easy thing. Honestly, Doom's account is the only first floor boss I might have been worried about here. Everything else. The other two are fairly easy. Both apples, uh, very manageable. Okay, you're down to 8 HP. We should just be able to kill you. Like that, cool. Yeah, I'm overconfident here, you know, just going for one side is not bothering to clash, but it's because we're goaded. Nice. Okay, it took a second to process that. It happens. It's a victory, though. Mariachi Sinclair Sweep. And we can heal up to, like, fully max uh, at this upcoming shop. We get child within a flask. That's a source of lust resources, so that's nice to see. Choosing stuff like this is actually fairly, you know, not the worst idea in situations like this. I'll just grab the cost, though. Let's see, what do we want here? Does anything here particularly stand out to me? Rogan Compass is, like, nice. That's for sure. Just for more sinking stuff, but it's not great. None of these rewards seem that, you know, game-changing. Coffee and Cranes is nice. We have to go through Nagland Hammer, though. Uh, well, that's a floor we're going to need to avoid at all costs, I think. Actually... That's not a bad idea. And that's going to seem really strange. Like, why do I want portable... Uh, the, why do I want charge? But it's a, it's a little bit of a strange idea I had. There's one support passive. I guess technically more if I had thought my team through a little bit more. But W Hong Lu's support passive. Um, We need some pride. We'll be able to get that, though. Low speed gains two haste next turn. I have five plus charge count. Start of the combat phase. So as long as we can just keep on getting him to a little bit of charge, he will gain some haste. He'll be able to roll higher, not first turn, of course, but every other turn. So I like that idea a lot. Might want to try and prioritize some charge things. Anyways, okay, there's Grand Welcome. Excellent. Mile post to pay off in the long run. Let's get some other healing things, potentially. 
I mean, that's nice. Cigarette holder is not bad either. And we can get Sinclair another skill three. Oh, this is a, like a perfect floor. We can sell stuff if need be too. I'll sell you just to get some healing on Sinclair. I'd like him to be max for safety's sake. And do I want compass? I need to sell something else, something a little bit pricey. I mean, I don't really need the sinking stuff, right? This is just more sinking. I'd sell it to get something else for sinking, though, so... Don't know how smart of a move that is. Yeah. I'll roll with it. Compass is kind of better for sinking, because we can actually get some, some sinking count. I think it was probably a stupid move all in all, but, uh... And made my decision. So that's that, that's fine. Right. My computer was acting up, so a one quick restart later, and we're back to it. Okay. Gambler floor does that's mean there's going to be a fair bit of enemies that use slash attacks. So that part's a little scary. They also have a fair bit of gluttony, which we are weak oh, to. Uh, these guys are a lust, though. A lot of slash. Some pierce, though, right? Actually, some blunt, huh? Well, that works, too. We're, we outspeed the entire uh, enemy team, so we can just immediately cavernous wailing and get away with it first thing. So that's cool to see. Blubber bubble, blubber bubble. And the optimal strat might be like wait a couple of turns until we can get like a gloom resonance and then blubber bubble again. Isn't it supposed to just play the shield HP now? I guess it does on the. It won't on this screen though, right? That's the thing. Like if we look now. Yeah, 34 shield HP. Okay, cool. Good to know. We're getting bad speed rolls. Excellent. Love to see it. We're almost out of shield, but that's fine. It's meant so that we've taken, like, no damage these couple of turns. That's cool to see. We've got some Panada partying, so these guys are neutral to it. So, uh, we can get our stagger bar down a little bit. So if we do take too much damage, we can get through it easily enough. Right. Okay, we've got more of these. If we go for a 3 resonance, what do we need to get the big effect? 4 plus gloom resonance, okay. So we'll wait till next turn and then blubber bubble again? I think I think that'll be the play. If we keep on doing stuff like that for the rest of the fight, then that does mean... Uh... Yeah, it does mean we'll go through two loss each fight. I think we should be able to manage that, though. Trial and Flash means we get one loss for free each fight, so we just need to get an average to, like, one loss uh, with Grand Welcome each fight, which I do think we get on average. I think. Because, I mean, like, logically, you know, you get kill, you get two random resources, so kill five people, you've, you're almost certainly going to get at least one loss on average, right? Cool. Cavernous Wailing here. We're not going to corrode it still. Don't have enough lust to feel comfortable doing that. Uh, we should be set now. And because we've got a high resonance, it will also be a three target, so that's cool. I like to see that. Yeah, Stagger Threshold is also probably just going to be gone by the end of this turn, Tails. That's fine. I'm not that worried. We get our Blur Bubble. We do some good damage. And more Panada Partying, cool. Yeah, Stagger Threshold almost gone now. And we rolled another head, so cool. Oh, it's on use, that's right. I forgot, Upside 4 makes it uh, on use instead of heads hit. So you're guaranteed to get it. You're guaranteed to get the uh, Stagger Threshold reduction. Because before Upside 4, it was on, only on heads hit. So Sandy kind of mattered because you kind of randomly roll tails on a skill three. Sometimes it would make it, you know, not do the thing that you know you're trying to get it to do, which always felt awful. But we're we're go we're good. Nice. There's also another question. I wonder, would we want commemorative coin? Probably, right? Because then we'd just get more. It would mean we'd spend more resources, we'd spend more sanity. But we would get more shield because we'd double up on it. Or we'd just use our skill 3 again, right? It wouldn't necessarily hit the Hiko. So if we see a commemorative coin, I think I will take it for a team like... For a, I say for a team like this as if our team doesn't just consist of one, you know... You know, German boy with a sombrero and maracas. Uh, 
Sometimes that is, you know, the optimal team. Yeah, each fight is like five minutes, but that's all right. We pull through. We'll get more events on this floor, potentially get some other decent things. We didn't get any much for healing beyond like uh, my L post, so could be nice to get something for that. Burial Curse only applies to number six deployed identity, so that's worthless. We can event to your KQE. Sure, we'll take it. It triggers for a skill two, I guess. We can stack some burn potency with skill two, do some more damage with it. And we also get 40 cost here. Actually, I could have taken the speed if I needed it, but it would just go to like another random Ting Dang fight. This one's actually a random one instead of being an elite encounter, so it shouldn't be that big of an issue. Yeah, it's only four enemies this time around. We can immediately cavernous wailing. We've got the lust for it. You know, pull through. I'd also, I would like to build up a little bit of lust though, because if we can get that, so we can trigger uh, Ryoshi support passive, Chef Ryoshi support passive, and just gain his healing every time we get a kill, which is nice to have. So I'd like to have it. If we don't, I'm not too concerned though. We're still doing all right so far, right? We've got you know a nice 40 shield for this turn. We can do some decent damage, potentially. Get our sanity back, that's good. But we don't get a rest stop or anything before the boss on this floor, so... It's important to make sure we stay relatively HP'd up. Because it's going to be Ida, who might be really scary. Because she's got a lot of scary slash attacks, I know. Just gotta hope we can deal with her decently enough, right? We can hit a little bit. We ran out of Blubber Bubbles, so that's fine. We take some damage. We're also, you know, clashing a fair bit at this point, though, and we might be able to get some, like, kills and staggers and stuff at this point. Yeah, we stagger you. We do some decent damage to the guy who's already staggered with our skill 3. I don't know if we kill, because I don't know how low his HP is, and we're also Mariachi Sinclair, right? Ch 6 for damage, though. Just a, a, pretty much any attack should finish that guy off. Shame we... Uh, we can't attack him this turn. Cool. So does our skill 1 kill this guy? He needs to do 14 damage, and yeah, it does. Cool. That's nice. That's a guy with 2 skill slots down. It makes us a lot closer to their amount of skill slots. We still have less than them, I think. Because we're going to have 5 and... Are they going to have 6 next turn? They might. I think they will, yeah. But that's fine, because we also kill this guy. So yeah, we're set. Gray coat could be nice, because then that means our ego and our skill 3 heals us. And we use our skill 3 a fair bit. It doesn't do a lot of damage, but even a bit of, like, we'd get, like, a 10 healing for a skill 3 usage or something like that. I guess it depends on who we're hitting, but another ego gift that would help out a fair bit, right? We're Gloom with Panada Party. Let's go. 166 HP going to the eye to fight. We'll see. I guess we get an event. Maybe we'll get something that heals us up here. We'll see. No, but this is actually not bad. This will weaken everyone in the eye to fight. Because it is a normal non focus encounter. So it'll be easier to stagger some enemies, put get them out of the other way. Okay, you're going for weak attack here. Okay. So, I mean, the plan here is probably just going to immediately blubber bobble it, right? Might be a fight worth corroding. Eh, it's not really that worth corroding usually, right? Let's see. Let's see it through. 20% shield, yeah. That part didn't change. This is 20% shield plus 5 times highest resonance. You would have resonance this turn, though. So we don't gain the additional shield. We don't gain anything beneficial like that. But we will gain the aggro next turn. Which is nice, it means, uh, we heal every time we hit. Just something... I'll probably just use Awakening for now, though. Maybe I'll corrode, like, turn 3 or something. Or, like, once again, the turn 4 corrosion it seems like a pretty solid strategy a lot of the time. Because then we can actually get the Gloom Resonance, which would be pretty nice. Although the issue is, if we're going to want to win basically any clashes... We're going to need to skill 3, I'm sure. Instead of stock saving it up for super long. Okay, we've got some decent speed this turn, cool. I, mean, I probably should be saving my skill 3s though, so we can get that 4 Gloom Resonance when the time comes. That's fine. But I'll settle for like another Awakening non-resonance skill 3 next turn, something like that, right? 
We're getting some staggers, so that's nice. Our stagger threshold's moving away. We get a rest off within the start of the next floor, so we can heal up there. And we also have mile boost, so we will get some healing just by moving to the next floor naturally. And your blunt attack is fine. Okay, yeah. We didn't run out of shield there, so that's nice to see. We are slow this turn, though. Not a party. You don't have any... Why do I think you've got slash attacks? They're only blunt. I'm going insane, probably. That's usually the safe explanation. We'll try this, though. We're not being hit by anything... We're getting hit by some scary attacks, actually. I was going to say we're not getting hit by anything that scary, but there's some scary stuff here. We could Lantern, actually. It still costs one Lust, some Pride, some Gluttony. Gluttony is the only thing that's actually, you know, too big of an issue there. But we will heal up a fair bit. Are we below half HP? No. I think we can tank it this turn. Next turn we might need to do something special, though. Not a party would be scary, but we resist Blunt and Gloom here, so even your 12 roll only did 2 damage. 7 defense level up is nice. It's why I like running like the Zvi Gregor, Zvi Faust support passives. I guess Faust doesn't trigger here because we need the 2 Gloom res to trigger that one, but Gregor is just a good way to stack defense level, I think, right? And defense level is just super nice. That's why I like Zvi Gregor so much when you're like soloing with him, right? He's cool. Nice, doing some damage. Okay. Next turn, we'll be able to Funny Gloom Resonance. Can we wait a turn? I think so. Yeah. Next turn, we'll Funny Gloom Resonance. This turn, we'll try seeing how many of these guys we can kill. Maybe we won't need to Funny Gloom Resonance, depending on how things go. We could actually Lantern up if we're, like, low on HP. But that's nice. We got the Chef Ryoshu passive to trigger there. So that was some healing. Stagger you. I think that guy was going for another attack, so that's a nice stagger. I might be wrong, though. No, I think that guy was. Cool. Yeah, that guy was... The other attack was the slash deck I was slightly afraid of. We shouldn't need another blow bubble, then. That's cool. Good stuff. Oh, no, this guy was going for this. Okay, that's fine. We're fine, I think, still. We should be able to just win this fight. Yeah. You hit us still. You're not doing much damage, though. We are weak to Envy, so you are doing some damage with that attack. But not doing much. I think we're set. Because we're going to kill some enemies here. We're going to win some clashes. We'll heal off a little bit with, you know, Chef Ryoshu passive. Because we're definitely getting a kill here, right? Surely. There's no stagger, at least, so that's good. Yeah, this kills. Or we can roll Tails and leave this guy on 1 HP. Okay. Dawn's of Passion kills, though. There's our healing. Some neutrals. I guess we'll just dodge there then. Might as well. The smarter option. Make sure that we're fine. Nice. Even our tails was doing decently there. Cool. Good stuff. Got a kill. Heal up more Chef Ryoshu passive. Oh no. Yes. There we go. So now we can get the next rest off. We can spend some cost to heal up 50% of our HP and be back to max. That's cool. And I'd also goes down there. Cool. All in all, the show still looking fairly well. We're only halfway through the run, and it's been, like, who knows how long in this video. We can get Battery Socket. We now have some Charge Gain, which is a funny idea. Ram Tier 2 Ego Gift. Sure, Fluorescent Lamp. Not bad. Kaleidoscope is funny, but it doesn't trigger for us. Seeing Sun or Memory, also funny, doesn't do anything for us. Anything here that does much of anything for us? Not really. I think I can reroll. Oh, there is. Piece of relationship. Hmm. Don't mind if I do. I'll take my five, potentially ten levels if I upgraded it. But even if I do upgrade it, it'll be at, you know, the end of the fourth floor. So therefore not be anything too strong. Oh, we can get Kermila plus plus. Just made normal fights easier, because those are the only things we're actually concerned about, right? Heal you up to max. Cool. Anything else we want to enhance? We could enhance Portal Battery Sock. It'd be a little bit more charge. That part doesn't matter. I like upgrading for Larson Lamp. We kind of need something that inflicts rupture. We sold Talisman Bundle, so we don't have anything like that right now. I think we'll just save the rest of the cost. Shouldn't be that big of a deal. And we can do something like that. It looks pretty good. 
Okay, it is worthwhile to pass this uh, check now, right? Because you gain cost if you pass this check. However, we will also... You know, we'll just do this. It's a win-win with this. Because if you still lose SP if you pass that check, right? But you also gain some cost for it, so it's not, you know, purely detrimental now. Oh, Pendant's nice. A little bit better maintain maintaining poise on Sinclair, but he still has awful poise count, and it's a solo, so Pendant only does so much. Yeah, we're good. These guys aren't going to be too bad. I will still blow our bubble just for safety here, I think. Especially since we're going first this turn. It's just convenient. It's just convenient. Right. But I don't think we'll need to do it again this fight. So we'll be able to build up lost resources, that sort of stuff. Which is cool. And we will start gaining the haste turn 3 onwards, I believe, right? I don't know what that haste was from. That was from something random. I don't think it was from you, though, yeah, because you're too haste. Do we have something that gives us haste, and I just didn't realize it? I don't think so. Oh, no, we, we've got a oh, fluorescent lamp. Oh, wait. Ooh. Fluorescent lamp may not be bad, actually. If we can get, like... Something that just gets a little bit of rupture on enemies. If we can get Talisman bundled back alongside Fluorescent Lamp. Or, like, Thrill would be, you know, best case scenario. I'm not going to bet on Thrill, though. It's not exactly the most common thing to get. But it would work, wouldn't it? Hmm. I guess that's something to keep in mind. Anything that looks rupture... Upgrade that to... It's too late to upgrade that to plus plus, though. Well, that's fine. I should have thought that through. I didn't think that the few that we kind of really want haste, don't they? Just to make it so that we... We kind of want early haste, though. And there's not really... Is there anything that gives turn one haste? I don't think so. That's kind of the turn where it matters the most, because that's when we set up the blower bubble. Well, if we have if we get trapped in some, you know, scary fight, the good thing is we can just reset until we get a decent speed roll and the enemies get to not decent speed roll. And we can also uh sapling of light, right? If that ever becomes important, that is a feature that exists in the game that I always forget exists because it's fairly unimportant most of the time. But it is super nice. Oh, this guy's panicking. What a buffoon. Yeah, let's just kill this guy. Put him out of his misery. He's panicking. Bro's panicking. Yeah, Panop just does the job. Cool. We have decent boys going on there. So that's nice. Is there anything else that's good for poise count that we get? I mean, I guess getting... Nothing that really can, like, match us, right? That's the thing. Because the thing with poise in solos is the fact that even if you get good EO gifts for it, you still are going for so many attacks in a single turn that unless you're an actual poise unit, you're not going to be able to maintain it very reasonably. Yeah, like this turn, we're going to get hit by this attack, but that's not very scary, so I'm not too concerned. I actually want a Cavernous Willing turn too, honestly. No, no, we lose these clashes. Yeah, we'll just Cavernous Willing immediately. Because Cavernous Willing isn't going to do much for us this turn, but it'll block stuff next turn, right? And I guess that's the part that matters. Tails, that's fine. And we gain random haste there, so that's nice to see. We got five charge, so we'll gain the haste next turn from the Sinclair, or from the Hong Lu passive, so that's cool to see. And we've got some skill 3s this turn, which should do decent damage. These guys are weak to blunt, but, uh, you know, Tails is unfortunate. Especially because they're guarding, so we're not clashing, and therefore we're not gaining sanity this turn. That's a little rude. Run out of Blur Bubble, we're fine. Decay Ampule. I mean, Decay Ampule's rude, but it's also not that big of a deal. We will get a clash here, so that's riveting. <laughs> Only one, though, because uh, these guys love their defensive skill. Nice stagger, though. Sometimes a skill 2 is all you need. How funny would it be 
if Optai 5 turns Mariachi Sinclair into like a competent poise unit. Like even something like make his skill 3 do more damage on crit, make his skill 1 have some poise. Like it could work, that's for sure. Issue is his skill 2 and his evade are the only thing that's given poise count and his skill 1 is no poise whatsoever. Yeah, he's got 30% crit damage with Panada Party. But only if the unit has 5 plus poise count, which he cannot manage. That is for sure. So, you know, if you can theoretically reach this, you know, impossible goal, uh, good for you, right? You know, you can get a little bit of a benefit. Good luck reaching that, though, that's for sure. You'll need it. Bailey Rolla does decently. Think. It staggers, right? It just straight up kills, too, so that's cool. That guy's low. This guy's also going to be low, I assume. Yeah, cool. They heal up because they're K-Corp units, so they're just getting their, you know, 30 healing and stuff. The drone's only dodging this turn, though, so... We should be able to just get some kills. The fact that he's not healing up one of these super low HP guys is very... I'm very glad to see, that's for sure. Nice 12 HP. We've got another Panada party with that guy's name on it, so that'll be good. Yeah, it's only the drone left. Never mind, this is going for you, huh? Thought that was going for, I guess, yeah, fair enough. Either way, we kill all these enemies this turn, I believe. So that's not a worry. And we get an event, and we get a uh, focus encounter into the boss. Do I don't know who the boss is, was it? It was Pierce, I think. I don't remember which one it was, though. I saw Pierce, and I didn't actually look at the rest of the weaknesses. Curriculum's nice. I'm a boss, is that? Oh, I see. Okay. That's fine. I think. It'll be fine. I think so. Yeah. Because it's, uh, what's its face? Centipede, right? I think so. Okay, this fight's nice because we don't even need to bother egoing here. We can just save our lust resources. We can just dodge. And we might get a random Tails or something, which would be unfortunate if so, but we're still rolling like 12s and stuff on Tails, right? And look at how much poise count we get from decent dodging. Because is it uncapped? Yeah, it is uncapped. It's only one poise count per dodge, but... An uncapped dodge is an uncapped dodge. It's saying it's that one first, but I don't believe you. I'll just clash both of them anyways, yeah. Doesn't matter. Yep, keep on dodging. Stupid evade rolls. I really wish Sank Otis' support passive wasn't Pride Resonance, because it would be really funny for poised teams, right? But yeah, now we've got actually some poise. So now we can actually make use of his skill 3's, you know, additional crit damage. We need potency, though, which is also a bit of an issue, but our skill 2 is a little bit potency, right? Yeah, it's 2 potency. Riveting. Okay, cool. And we've got four attacks now, so we can clash everything from here on out. So that's pretty chill. Stuff like that. I don't know if we get a single kill this turn, honestly. I guess if we get a nice crit, maybe we would. I don't think so. These guys resist gloom, right? So Panada probably doesn't kill. We might kill the two stagger guys if we get some crits, though. The damage prediction says we won't kill, but it's not factoring in the crits and stuff, which is a damage increase. Yeah, so that kills, which means this probably kills definitely, right? Yeah, definitely. Cool. So now it's just you two left, so that's easy enough. A little bit of this. Seven speed this turn, very nice. So it's centipeding time. That's fine. Centipede's probably a turn two blubber bubble, blubber bubble type of fight, I feel like, right? Because turn one is not attacking. Turn two, we can just make sure we blow our bubble against. We don't even need to blow our bubble. We can just dodge. I don't want to though, because we're probably gonna need to blow our bubble against the actual uh, mass attack. Turn two. 
Don't want hitting us, especially because... Is it Envy? I think it's Envy. So we do a lot of damage. Yeah, turn one. We just put out a party. Head's kind of better for us, right? You're shielding, but like... You can get us... Nah, I don't care that much. We'll just hit like this. It's not going to do a lot, that's for sure, but that's fine. I'm not concerned. Yeah, we're going to need to level up that. And what we... We dodge this one, I believe, right? That should work. Blur bubble this one. That should work out. It's a two gloom res, so we could have actually benefited from... Our tails would still be winning this, jeez. Oh, uh, we could have actually benefited from going for the corrosion, theoretically, but it wouldn't have necessarily targeted what we were tar trying to target with it, so it's not that good of an idea, I don't think. That still works, though. We get our blower bubble going. So in case one of these evades fails, which really doesn't seem very likely right now, that's for sure, uh, we'd still be fine. Yeah, dodge that. That's weaker to our stuff, but we're also not winning clashes against it, it seems. We'll just do that then. That's fine. I'm fine just going for the body a little bit. You're going to have 20 self-charge just naturally before you die. Even before factoring, you know, the whole doubling self-charge when you die thing. So, that's something I think we can just accept is going to be the case. Unfortunately, evading your attacks won't count as winning clashes. So, once we do kill you, uh, not over yet, is it? Still take a while. Need to make sure we've got a bunch of those saved up. Mm, that's fine. Yeah, that's what we want to clash against, I think. Something like this should work. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, we're good. I think. As always, like, so, in folks encounters for solos, the first few turns are always the rough part, because that's when you're building up skill slots, but not really an issue here. Send me rise to coil up. Oh, we're actually going to be able to deal with your mechanics for once, huh? Not something you see too frequently. The kind of boss that the mechanics rarely ever show up, right? We'll do that. Want to weaken the head so we can break the shield and do the whatever gimmick you've got, right? Oh, we're actually going all in the body, though, so that doesn't that doesn't apply. We're just, maybe we aren't going for the head, you know. Whoopsies. We stagger you, so that's cool. You're already at, like, what, 15 self-charge or something, I'm sure? It's a lot, but we can actually potentially get rid of your self-charge here. Which would be nice. Stagger is cool. Means we can get some decent damage off on the body. We also have a lot of poise. What's maintaining our poise count? I guess it's the Yi Song passive that's helping. Eh, that's only one poise count per skill too, right? It's not insane. Lose three self charge, fragile stuff. Gain shield by the head's current HP. We cannot get through that much, unfortunately. Uh, we are going to save our skill threes for the most part, though, unless there's a skill three, you know, queued up to show up next because uh. I do not want the final phase to take forever, so I'd like to have a bunch of skill 3s saved up. Right? It means this fight's gonna take a while, but... A worthy trade-off, I'm sure. Yeah, break the body, cool. Don't know the fashion might just do it, then. Yeah, it does, cool. Alright. So now we just gotta win a bunch of these clashes, which is very doable. Just pin we're, we're having a full on Panada party, right? Just Panada party after Panada party after Panada party. And we'll get through your self charge next turn, right? We'll have some Panada parties next turn, I'm sure. Maybe we're lucky we can get more skill threes from the next shop, right? If we had only skill 3s and skill 2s, that would be optimal, I think. Because your skill 1's real bad. Your skill 2 is not great either, but it has poise on it, so it has a purpose, right? So that's at least something. Yeah, 
kind of shock we're able to maintain our poise so well still. Yes, yeah, this, this is fine. We'll just do this bit, right? We're, we're only going to clash for the Panada parties because you just die instantly. But you could have just win rated or something if we wanted to, but that's still fine. On to the final floor, though. We get a piece of relationship as well, so that's funny. I'll take uh, I'll take a random video gift. Skeletal crumbs. I mean, that's nice. Take less damage if we do some sinking shenanigans. What do we want here, though? Who is fine for us? We need to desperately avoid Fey Lantern, I think. You're boring. Fey Lantern's there, too. Let's refresh. Kim is a bad idea. We are not doing Kim. The floor kills us. We get a Jun, and then we are doomed. Uh... We need to go for, like, a Wrath, but we could go for Gleppo Floor. Mm. Yeah, because this is a no, this is a no. These three are options. I'll take the Gloom Floor. Why not, right? We might get a Gleppo Final Boss, which would be a fitting mirror match. That's Fish. Okay. Not a Gleppo Mirror Match. That's fine. Still a fitting enough Final Boss, I feel like. Glimpse of Flames. Interesting. Eh. Not great. Lane Raw, that's cool. I'll take that. Blue Zippo Lighter, that's cool. Rags, that's cool. Midwinter Nightmare, Stone Tomb, those are cool as well, I guess. I mean, we can also freely sell Milepost at this point, right? And uh, some a lot of the EVs we have just aren't great in any anyways, so... Easy enough to sell. Midwinter, we'll take that. Roll with you. See if we can get another skill three for Sinclair. No, that's fine. I'm not that worried. This is an easy enough floor, I feel like. There's Homeward as well, so that's more healing. Not that we've really needed healing, like, at all this as of late. We've kind of been perfectly fine. But still. I guess I should have thought whether or not a Slash Week or a Pierce Week would be better for us, but it's the Gloom Floor. It probably just has random stuff on it, yeah. These guys are actually a little bit scary, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, these are the guys I worry about whenever I get, like, the Kanto 2 floors right. It's not Ida and stuff, it's really her minions. Because they're the ones that have, like, Slash multi-coin attacks and stuff, right? So Cavernous Willing is going to be a big help here. We'll also gain haste immediately next turn. So nice. I might just Blubber Bubble again. We've got enough lust we can get away with it, right? Then we should force safety. And we're 6-speed this turn, so that's cool. And then Panada Party kills if you roll heads, so that's cool. Don't gain the mass deck weight since it needs to be three res for a two target or four res for a three target. That's fine. Stagger that guy, cool. But not a party, roll heads so we do get the kill, nice. We heal up. You're stacking debuffs on us and stuff, which is fine because you're not doing like any damage. We've got our protection, we've got our blower bubble, we are unbothered. Sinclair is just chilling in his watery little sphere of protection. He's like in a big hamster ball, but made of tears. Which sounds pretty awesome, not gonna lie. Wouldn't you love to be in a big hamster ball of tears? If the answer is no, you're probably, you know, giving the right answer. Just, just being honest, but, uh... If you agree that you'd love to be in a big blob of tears, then, uh... Thumbs up to you. Props to you. Yeah, we're out of Blower Bubble, but that should be fine. We're taking a single one-sided attack this turn. That's fine. Maybe we'll stagger that guy before we take the one-sided attack. I haven't checked how low that guy's HP is. One HP on that. That's rude. We just kill him next turn, though. Done as the Passion definitely kills you. We've got so many random buffs and stuff right now. It's pretty funny. I also like the one defense power-up we got from Lotus's support passive. Truly the most crucial benefit. Oh yeah, and they're all dead. Nice. That's our victory. We've got two more fights on this floor, so that's good. 
one normal, one risky. And I think the risky is against mermaids, so... Or elite is against mermaids. NDA doesn't help us that much. Actually, this helped us, though, right? Getting the uh, Temporal Bridle. Because this is blunt damage up, right? Yep, offense level and blunt damage up every turn. That's cool. We're not negative, so we don't gain the third part of the, the Eo Gift. We still gain the second part, so that's nice. A uh, med kit could be nice. Cool. We need to get below half HP, which shouldn't happen. We wouldn't want it to happen, but even if it does happen, I think we will be fine. Because assumably by that point, we probably use enough skill threes that we're not necessarily staggered by that point. Oh, we're fastest here. Or not actually fast to speed tie, but basically fastest. That's cool. You land some hits against, you know, our unshielded body, but then we reapply our, you know, our frog armor. <laughs> frog tier armor. Like, he's just, like, scooped out a frog's eye and just keeps on, like, squeezing it onto himself for protection. Some sort of weird circle protection stuff, that's for sure. Yeah, sure, I'm fine with this. We could reapply our bubble blubber, blubber bubble. I don't think we need to, though. We're mostly fine here. We might take some damage, but we do get a shop at the end of this floor, so we can heal up if need be. I'm not too concerned about damage. The mermaid fight coming up next might be scary. They're going to do some SP damage stuff, I'm sure. Because I think it was, it was, what, Pride Envy, which I think means it's just going to be, like, generic pallid mermaids. Or not just generic, but, like, a mixture of white flag. Maybe some Pequod Town in there, too. White, blue. Right. Stuff like that. I don't know for sure, but that's the only thing that Envy Pride can be for a elite encounter. It's, it is elite, which does mean there's a decent chance there will just be the quad people just chilling there just to make my life harder. Which, like, fair enough. I mean, it's their job, right? I can't really fault the quad town for making my life harder, because, like, they're paid to do it. And they're paid in doubloons, and you know how much I love doubloons. So, like, fair enough, right? You know, Ahab's like, if you kill that little... German boy, I'll give you, you know, five golden doubloons. And then, like, the entirety of the Quad Town is just, like, drooling from their mouths, like, oh, we need those doubloons. Funny that the Quad Town's the one drooling when Ahab herself drools most of the time, but runs in the family, I guess. Anyways, that's that fight done. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about at this point. <laughs> love, love a good banter. Love good banter. It's I don't know if it counts as banter when it's just, you know, me talking to myself. Okay, I just blew Pallid Mermaids, though. That's cool. Those guys get staggered immediately. That's also pretty cool. You do some damage. That's rude. Smell I'll probably kill. No, you resist Gloom, don't you? Yeah, that's unfortunate. Does Cavernous Wailing kill? Maybe. It says it's two damage off, but things can change, right? Okay, yeah, you're doing SP damage and stuff. That's rude. We get it. Did they? I thought they did, but we're still at 30 SP, which is how much we should have had anyways, so... They do SP damage, they're passive, but wasn't one of those skills like do SP damage on hit or something? Oh, it's Clash Wind do SP damage, yeah. Never mind then, that makes sense why that didn't trigger. <laughs> Banata Party gets the kill on you, this fraud. This froggy fraud. And do we win these? We physically cannot... No, we physically can win these, but he needs to roll heads. Okay, we won those. Cool. Stagger that guy. Nice. Yeah, you're still attacking us. We've killed one of your allies, though, so I'm not too concerned at this point. That's the part that matters. And we can clash everything this turn. Not necessarily good clashes and everything, you know? These guys have negative sanity, so they're lying to us most of the time anyways, but... You're dead. Uh, we win against you, so that's pretty cool. We stagger you, we probably kill you with our skill too, so there's only one enemy left now. So yeah, uh, pretty awesome. Yeah, nice. And there's our victory. Good stuff. Resolution does nothing. Okay. 
What do we want here? Barbed wire. Or barbed snare. Yeah, we want that. Streams of choices, that is. It's really good for us. We'll sell our stuff that gives resources at this point. Like, we should be set anyway, so I'm not too concerned. We've got a lot of lost stockpiled. Anything else that's like healing stuff we can get away with not having anymore. That's a decent bit of starting stuff. Roll for Sinclair, potentially. Energy battery is also nice, isn't it? Yeah, sure. Our metal horseshoe is also nice, I guess. Yeah, sure. And there's a Sinclair skill. That's awesome. Do that. We're going to upgrade some stuff, so we might sell some other random garbage we have, like, because this doesn't do anything. Uh... A lot of this stuff doesn't do anything, just in general, right? That's fine. It's a fish fight, so we... Fish might be d available on our part, right? You don't do anything for us. You don't matter. You don't matter that much, even though you do technically trigger here, but... Not to a degree where I'm that bothered by selling you, right? Don't need you. Everything else I think I want to keep, at least... Alright, you don't actually matter. Okay, cool. That'll work. Could have done the free refresh to see if we got anything cool, but I didn't see a need to. We've got plans, and that's fluorescent lamp plus plus, more damage up, more haste. That's pretty cool. Uh, That's nice. We'll roll with that. Rex is funny. Peace relationship plus plus, that's right. That's an obvious one. Curriculum Vitae actually is not bad either. We're building up a bunch of charge too, so might as well. And then finally, Ornamental Horseshoe. Can we get anything else here? We can get Rags upgraded too for a little bit more damage when they're max SP, so that's funny. Alright. You know, that means fish. Okay. Similar enough plan to what we've been doing. Evade turn 1, skill 2, blubber bubble, right? And we evade this one. We're going to need to get a little lucky if we want to actually evade everything here, but that's easy enough to do, right? Oh, I see. I didn't actually piece that together. Yisong's support passive works for your evasion. Oh, so every time we get one poise count, it's instead two poise count. Okay, so that's why we're able to maintain poise so well with our evasion. Hadn't fully, you know, triggered... Hadn't fully, you know, occurred to me why exactly it was working so well. We'll do that. Is that the right one? Yeah, it is. Okay. And we'll Cavernous Wailing one of these, just to get that going a little bit, right? Just in case, right? We should be fine. We'd be better off double evading, just in case one of our fades broke, so we'd have another one then, right? But the shield is also a good, you know, fallback. That's also a 16 tails roll with this evade right now, because of how much of a level difference and stuff we have. Even at the 30 sanity, we're still perfectly fine. We're not rolling tails anyways, though. We keep on rolling heads, just luckily. And yeah, we've got 18 speed on Mariachi Sinclair right now. That's a 5 speed roll of base, though, because it's only 13 haste. So we managed a max roll there, so that's fun. Okay, this turn is where you're doing some rude stuff, though. Yeah, we're going to need to Ego the Blood Cannons, I think. Oh, even Ego is not actually that great for the Blood Cannons. We can dodge them, actually, can't we? Blood Cannon probably has, like, a decent attack level modifier, though. Actually, plus zero. Okay. Here's the plan. We're gonna we're gonna gamble it all, I think. I think that's funny. So we're gonna do it. We're gambling it all. We get our three gloom resonance for that, so that's cool. Oh, it actually we, does mean we're gonna be at 30 sandy for all these dodge. <laughs> oh no, that's not good, actually. Okay, we've got shield, though. We've got our blub 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 blubber bubble. A nice protective blubber bubble. We've got like 50% shield at this point. Issue is, if we get hit by those lasers, we will be bleeding a bunch. But we don't get hit by those lasers, so it doesn't matter, does it now? <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Okay, we're gonna need to start doing damage to you is the issue, though, because we really have not been doing much, if any, damage so far. Um, Let's just go all in with these on here. I think that'll work. Get an evade going here. 
Taking down the actual body itself is a pretty smart move. Dawns of the Passion should be doing some pretty good damage as well, so that's nice. Yeah, there's the Tails. We've been having pretty good luck with things. Oh, there's the Fluid Sack broken. Okay. That's pretty awesome. No need to worry about that anymore. Uh, yeah. Yeah, for having 30 sanity, we've been rolling a strange amount of heads, it feels like. Okay, there's a Tails. That's more so what you'd expect. You don't see a little bit more frequently than we have been seeing. And yeah, we're guaranteed poised for basically the rest of the fight now. That's pretty awesome. Get a bunch of these off. You know, let's throw in a corroded cavernous wailing as well. Cavernous wailing. Cavernous. What am I saying? God. Did we cavernous wailing with the slowest? Yeah, okay, that's fine. That makes sense. We target the left most part. It happens. That's okay. We're doing a lot of damage here. Our, you know, Hanada party is actually getting the 30% crit damage increase. I feel like a lot of SP loss and corrosion. What was that? Jeez. Yeah, but you get the kill. I assume we triggered something that the actual enemy was doing or lost us sanity or something. Because we were at like 30 sanity, then we dropped down to negative 26, right? Huh. Shh. His promo sad vein. Entertain me to no end. Cool to see. You did a lot of damage. Uh, we love Mariachi Sinclair, though. He's, he's, he's fun. This ego helps him out a lot, which is nice to see. He's still not great, don't get me wrong. Like, that's that should be fairly obvious. He doesn't work, you know. I'm sure you could run at him in hard, but he's probably even more, you know, RNG reliant stuff in hard. It's doable, though, right? And that's the part that matters. We've already done our daily pulls, yeah. I forgot for a second, because it's been, you know, a half a day since I recorded the first part of this. But yeah, this Cavernous Wailing, it's kind of basically a free slot in for pretty much every team, except for Rupture. If you're running Talisman Sinclair, you want a branch of knowledge. Everything else wants Cavernous Wailing. Kind of without a doubt. It's super nice. It's super good for just support reasons. Because this is in a solo circumstance. That's not the only situation in which you'd use Cavernous Wailing, right? You'd obviously also get a lot of benefit from using it in a team. Give it to your allies or something. Running like two-person, three-person teams with Sinclair, Cavernous Willing helps out a lot, right? Because it's guaranteed to hit at least you and one other ally. With high gloom resins, it hits up to, you know, un more allies, right? It can be four people in total, so that's cool. Or with four gloom resins once again. I'm glad it's four gloom resins, though, and not, you know, like a five or a six. Because those ones are a little bit harder to achieve. Four resonance. It is pretty doable a lot of the times. But anyways, that'll be all for this time. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye!